Hello everyone, my name is Anil Negi and in this video we are going to discuss a topic from class 9th chemistry that is water. So, as you are familiar that water is very important substance for us because water is used in our daily life. So, let's start with the occurrence of water. As you know, in our earth, water occurs in two forms. One is free state and other is combined state. Free state in free state, water can exist in the form of liquid, like in rivers, seas, ponds, etc. Similarly, in solid state, water occurs in the form of ice, snow, frost, etc. And in gaseous state, the water exists in the form of vapor. So, this is the free state of water in which it exists as water. The next is in combined state. So, in combined state, water does not occur independently, but it is the part of the molecules of other substances. For example, hydrated copper sulfate. The formula of hydrated copper sulfate is CuSO4.5H2. So, it exists as water of crystallization. We will discuss about water of crystallization later. Similarly, in other compounds like CaCl2 dot 2H2, this is hydrated calcium chloride. So, you can see water can exist in free state as well as in combined state. The next topic that we are going to discuss is composition of water. As you know, the water is a chemical compound which consists of hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms in the ratio of 2 is to 1. Since water does not have the property of hydrogen as well as the property of oxygen, it is a compound and its chemical formula is H2O. The next topic is importance of water. So, you are already aware of importance of water as water is very important for us in our daily life. As we use water for drinking, bathing, cleaning, for plantation. We also use water in industries, in irrigation, etc. So, water is very important for us in our daily life. The next topic is physical properties of water. So, first we will start with physical state. As you know that water exists in all the physical state, solid as well as liquid as well as gas. So, in solid state, it exists as ice, snow, frost, etc. Similarly, in liquid state, it exists as liquid water and in gaseous state, it exists as water vapor. So, the liquid water solidifies at 0 degree Celsius. So, the freezing point of water is 0 degree Celsius or you can say 273 Kelvin. Similarly, the liquid water is vaporized at 100 degree Celsius or 373 Kelvin. So, you can say that boiling point of water is 100 degree Celsius. But remember, the freezing point 0 degree Celsius and boiling point 100 degree Celsius is for atmospheric pressure that is 760 mm of Hg, 760 millimeter of Hg. Now, the next thing is appearance of water. So, you already know that water is a colorless and odorless substance as well as it is tasteless. The next is density of water. So, the density of water is highest as 4 degree Celsius which is 1 gram per centimeter cube or you can say 1000 kg per meter cube and it is at 4 degree Celsius. Above 4 degree Celsius the density of water decreases as well as below 4 degree Celsius the density of water decreases. So, you can say the density of water is highest at 4 degree Celsius. The Next thing is anomalous expansion of water. So, as you can see that the density of water is highest at 4 degrees Celsius, which is not same for all the liquids because for other liquids, the density decreases 
as we increase the temperature and the density increases as we decrease the temperature since on on, on decreasing the temperature the volume of the substance decreases therefore their densities increase but in case of water you can see first the volume of water decreases on decreasing the temperature and it become minimum at 4 degrees celsius but if we decrease the temperature of water below 4 degrees celsius it again starts expanding and its volume increases it means the density will be highest at 4 degrees celsius and above and below the 4 degrees celsius the density of water will be lower so that is why it is called anomalous expansion of water anomalous means strange the behavior that we do not expect is known as anomalous behavior so this is that is why this is called anomalous expansion of water because we don't expect the same behavior from most of the liquids but this is seen in case of water the last thing that we are going to know about water's physical property is electrical conductivity so pure water is an insulator of electricity means it does not conduct electricity however you have observed that the water conduct electricity it is because of the presence of salts dissolved in water but if you will take pure water it will not conduct electricity the next topic that we are going to discuss is solution so first of all what is a solution solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances generally the solution which contains two substances is known as a binary solution and these two components are called solvent and solute so remember the solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances homogeneous mixture means the composition of the substances is uniform throughout so for example the sugar dissolved in water that is an example of solution similarly salt dissolved in water is an example of solution now there are two components of a binary solution the solution which contains two substances and one component is called solvent and other is solute so the substance which dissolves the other substances in it is known as solvent for example water in case of water and salts or in case of water and sugar water is a solvent because water dissolves sugar in it similarly solute solute is the substance which is dissolved in solvent for example if you dissolve sugar in water then sugar is solute and water is solvent if you dissolve salt in water salt is solute and water is solvent now you can see water is solvent for so many compounds so therefore water is known as universal solvent water is called universal solvent because water dissolves so many substances like so many salts so many inorganic compounds so many organic compounds like acids and alcohols so therefore water is known as universal solvent as it dissolves so many compounds the next topic that we are going to discuss is dilute and concentrated solutions so remember the dilute solutions are those in which the quantity of solute is very small as compared to solvent but if you increase the quantity of solute in the solution it will become concentrated solution similarly if you will increase the quantity of solvent the concentrated solution will become dilute solution the next topic is unsaturated saturated and super saturated solutions so let's start with unsaturated solutions the solutions in which you can further dissolve a solute is known as unsaturated solution for example if you dissolve a spoon of sugar in water then you can further add a few spoons of sugar so since it has the ability to dissolve more sugar it will be known as unsaturated solution similarly saturated solution is the solution in which you cannot dissolve more solute for example if you dissolve sugar 
a few spoons of sugar and there will come a point after which no further sugar will dissolve in the solution that solution will be known as saturated solution and the third is super saturated solution so after saturated solution if you will try to add more solute in the solution then it won't dissolve that solute so this type of solution is known as super saturated solution so the super saturated solution is the solution in which the quantity of solute is more than it can dissolve so this is all about the solution and its types if you have any doubt please watch the video once again and if you have any queries please ask the question in the comments thank you very much